Hey, Celie, thank you so much for joining us on A Nurse's Voice. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So A Nurse's Voice is a time where we get to talk with some of our healthcare professionals and get to know you a little bit better, talk with you about your nursing experience, your experience as a nurse while traveling, and how you came to us and why you've chosen to stay with our agency. So without further ado, we're going to jump right on into the first question. So could you tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming a nurse? and maybe why you decided to become an emergency department nurse. I did not want to be a nurse. I was adamantly against being a nurse, Um, but I was really struggling early in college uh, to kind of figure out a path, what I wanted to do. Grades were kind of suffering and my parents are really ones that pushed it. My mom said, you know, we're not supporting you through college if you're not doing something productive. Um, so she kind of pushed the envelope and sent me to nursing school. Um, and I bawled my eyes out, cried, was absolutely miserable at first clinical. It was the worst thing I had ever experienced in my life. Um, and day two of clinicals, I kind of knew I was meant to be a nurse. I don't know what clicked. The classes made sense. It was kind of something that came natural. It's not easy, but it came sort of natural to me. I was like, I didn't even know what nurses did. And now we're 11 years in and I 99% of the time would not trade it for the world. (laughs) Of course, there are the one or two occasions where your job is hard, but it comes with the with the field. But I know that you are very passionate about caring for your patients and their well-being and that you've done a lot of advocating for your patients. So could you tell us a little bit about your work with the justice system and how you were able to advocate for your patients and work within the justice system while traveling and on assignments? That got really tricky. Um, I am a sexual assault nurse examiner, a certified SANE A adult and adolescence, as well as an ER nurse. And I had the opportunity, especially through like 2022, 2021, 2022, um, to participate in cases that I had completed prior to traveling um, using the, or participating in the court systems in Florida where I was practicing prior to traveling. Um, And I would just kind of bounce back between my travel assignment and um, my old hospital and um, the circuit state attorney's office there in that town. Um, But while I was traveling, that experience actually got me, uh, opened the door for me to be able to talk to um, the SANE program or sexual assault response teams in other areas and get to lend some of my experience um, from Florida to South Carolina, which is where I was traveling at the time. Um, And to be able to facilitate a smooth transition of care from ER patient to same patient if they needed ER care or to be able to complete those exams without having to transition care because I had the credentials. Um, I luckily did not have any active cases while I was traveling because that does get a little bit difficult. Um, One, the prosecuting service has to track you down wherever you are. Um, You are bound by the court system to appear. Uh, They usually are pretty flexible and work with you at least in my experience, they have been. Um, So you you have to kind of make those travel arrangements and you have to bounce back and forth between whatever location that the um, assault occurred or where it's being prosecuted and your home hospital, so. And did you have any trouble with your facilities allowing you to go back to testify for those cases or was it pretty smooth? Um, I'll be honest with you, it was very smooth. One, it's kind of hard to argue with a subpoena, um, that that's kind of frowned upon. Um, and two, most nurses, most organizations recognize that this is a pretty powerful moment to do something amazing for a patient, to really advocate for somebody who needs us outside of the hospital. Um, so on a human level, I've never had any issues. On an organizational level, 
Um, a little tricky just to get rescheduled or somebody to cover shifts if the subpoenas came in kind of short notice, which didn't happen very often. But no, I I was not super concerned um, in any point during my assignments that I wasn't going to be able to go back if I had to. That's great. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you heard about Travel Nurses Inc. and what drew you to our agency? Um, I'm very passionate about you guys. I love Travel Nurses Inc. I haven't traveled with anyone else. Um, did a little homework. I, I did look around and every interaction that I had had with any of the other agencies was a bot or a robo text or, you know, a million spam emails about contracts that I didn't have an interest in. And every time I talked to somebody with Travel Nurses Inc., it was you or it was another recruiter that was a face-to-face, -face, you know, phone-to-phone, -phone, human human-to-human interaction. And I think that's huge. You guys treat your staff, uh, your nurses, but all of your staff, it seems like, like humans, like you actually care about them because you do. You guys invest in us and I think that's huge and very rare these days. Well, we do try to provide that that um, level of care for our healthcare professionals and that support because, I mean, I know that you've had some pretty rough shifts and have had to call us at like two in the morning letting us know that it's not going well and there's always someone there to pick up the phone and to help you out. Yes, I was floored when somebody answered the phone and was just, what, what can I do? What do you need? But to have it in writing and to have that support and to know that you were, you know, your staff was right there for me, willing to do whatever it took to make sure that it was a safe, uh, safe for the patients and safe for me. Yep, that's most important. And selecting an assignment can be a pretty daunting task. So what are some of the criteria that you think about when you're deciding where to go for a travel assignment? Now, it's family. Uh, I have a uh, very small human under my care. Um, I have a one-year-old, so right now traveling is limited to um, things that work around both my husband and I's schedule. My husband is also a nurse, um, and so we both have to kind of balance what allows me to uh, fulfill my goals, my professional <clears throat> um, needs fill my cup which is traveling and experiencing new hospitals and experiencing new staff and learning um, but what also balances the needs of my family so right now proximity to family ease of uh, child care things like that that's really what dictates what we do um, as nurses and as as a family prior to that um, I'm pretty adventurous. I want to go new places and I want to see them. I was a military kid, so I traveled a ton as a child. But I like to know that I'm sort of close to an area um, that I have a support system if I need it. I don't want to go somewhere where I'm just completely an island by myself. So for me, it's common interests in the region, um, things we like to do as a family, experiences that we've not experienced that we can do with the safety net of having a you know, within an hour or two, or maybe a little more uh, safety net of, of support. Being pregnant and working is hard enough. Um, add on to that traveling and working 12 hour shifts and doing everything that you did with the justice system. Do you have any advice for any expecting moms who are maybe considering a travel assignment or who are currently on an assignment and they're expecting a child? Do you have any advice? Do it and be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Um, it's a very, especially if it's the first time, I was first time for me, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I'm an ER nurse, I am not an LND nurse. There's a big difference for any nurses watching that will recognize like, I don't do that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's hard. It was rewarding. It also gave me the opportunity to take a prolonged maternity leave. I was able to take, um, you know, a little bit longer off in between contracts and in between um, returning to work. I did keep a PRN at my home hospital where my daughter was born, um, just in case I needed that, you know, foot in the door. 
but I loved traveling while I was pregnant. I got to hear perspectives from different regions, from different, um, I worked in two academic hospitals, so different perspectives on academic medicine related to pregnancy, especially in the ER. Um, I also learned a lot about the maternal processes and how we treat pregnant patients in the ER. Um, and that changed my practice a lot. I have so much more empathy and patience and understanding for patients who don't know where to go or who they're supposed to check in with or what's normal and what's not. And sometimes that education, no matter how great your OB provider is, sometimes that education just doesn't happen. Um, and it was a really awesome opportunity to get to do that in a new setting where I was learning and educating at the same time. Um, so I really enjoyed that. The breaks between contracts were awesome because it wasn't FMLA. It wasn't, you know, um, using all of my PTO. It was being able to actually just have time off in between contracts um, and saving money in between those contracts so that, so that I could take those times off in between. Um, and I was able to take like, I think almost four months off before I went back to work. That's incredible. That's something that a lot of moms don't get to do. So I know that that was very special. Yeah. And could you tell us a little bit about um, the transition from traveling as a single person to traveling while pregnant to traveling as a mom and um, kind of what that looked like? Um, traveling as a single person, um, husband was then boyfriend at the time, um, also still an ER nurse. Um, he's a homebody. He really likes kind of having a set routine. He's worked for the same organization for a really long time. Um, and so he didn't really want to travel. So he was very supportive of me being able to travel and then coming home and then traveling and coming home um, and working our off time together where he could either come visit me and see without having to uproot himself. Um, so that was great. It was a wonderful experience as a single unmarried family or you know, single couple. Um, and then marriage, pregnancy, family, was a very difficult transition. We ended up moving in the process, so that didn't help everything else out. Um, but he did uh, change hospitals and has recognized that, okay, wait, maybe we do like this idea of seeing new things and sometimes seeing that the grass is always greener on the other side. Um, but it did become a lot more difficult trying to balance schedules. Um, as, as a traveler, you're not gonna be guaranteed a schedule a lot of times, unless you can get it written in your contract and that's kind of hard and that that goes a lot of different ways really quickly sometimes. Um, but finding the schedule groove and really getting a facility to be able to work with you to balance family, home life, and your work obligations. You're there to fill a need. So you are there to you know help where they need it and you don't necessarily get to dictate that. Um, but I've worked for really great facilities who haven't given us too much trouble, so I, I can't really complain, but I do know that it can happen. And those are things to be looking at on the front end whenever you're doing a phone interview, is to get the vibe of the facility, and that's your chance to ask the questions that you need answered. Well, thank you so much, Seely, for joining us. It has been such a pleasure getting to talk to you and getting to know you a little bit better. Um, and join us next time for another chance to meet another nurse on A Nurse's Voice.